Привет, товарищи! This is your peacekeeper, and it is time for the next video on how to play series on Russian DD line. This is the Tier 2 Storotsovoy class destroyer. Hey, hang on one second, let me fix voice. Hey guys, alright, it's your peacekeeper. And the Storotsovoy class destroyers are, are um, well, they're paper ships. <laughs> I... I, I hate to break it off like that, but uh, that's kind of the way that a lot of these ships are going to end up being. And unfortunately, Storotsovoy does not have a design number associated with it. And the best that I can tell is that Wargaming was able to find some obscure design plan for this ship in the archives that they have access to. And literally, there's no information for this ship anywhere. <laughs> Literally nowhere is there information for this ship. About the only thing that we can even infer is just from looking at the ship itself, and we can see right here that it is bearing the flag of the Imperial Russian Navy, not the Soviet Navy. So as a result, um, that's about the extent of the information that's available on Storotsovoy. Uh, so, we'll kind of cover some other things. Well, for one, Storotsovoy has an interesting name, and... Just so you guys know, the Russian and Soviet ships are oftentimes referred to with the pronoun of he. There are a couple of she's in the Navy, but overwhelmingly, Storotsovoy and all of the Russian destroyers are all going to be he's. Interesting little tidbit there. Uh, I know in the West, we often refer to our ships as she. I know that some of the European nations will go back and forth, depending on, you know, what it's named after. But overwhelmingly, uh, the U.S. sticks to she to describe their ships. I, I don't know why. I guess it's because ships are a labor of love for their crew, so they probably prefer it be female <laughs> instead of male. But uh, anyway, the name actually, Storotsovoy, the name actually means guard or protector, and that's about the extent of information I've got on it. The only other thing that I want to throw out there is you guys are going to see the, f the three letters VMF used to describe the Russian Navy or the Soviet Navy. And that means Vyana Marskoy Flot. And it literally means Navy in Russian. And it actually is applicable to both the Imperial Russian Navy, both before and after the Soviet Union, as well as the Soviet Navy. And so if you see VMF, that's what it means. Again, that's Voyana Marskai Flot. It literally just means Navy, but it's always applied to the Russian Navy. The Strotsovoy, though, in terms of in-game play style, because this is a paper ship, we don't have any history to go over, because in her in-game play style, uh, Strotsovoy starts off uh, the Russian line with uh, a familiar theme that you're going to see in many a ship after this, and that's going to be rush torpedoing. With only three rather slow firing and traversing guns, her gunplay isn't really that good, which is interesting because if you look at the end game for uh, Russian destroyers like, you know, Tashkent and Habarovsk, you've got <laughs> ships that have fantastic guns, but nope, Strotsovoy definitely betrays that eventual gameplay style in favor of torpedo armament. Which is also interesting because her torpedo armament is really not that strong either. With only a four kilometer range, it's not like she's a Rush or a Japanese destroyer that can sit in darkness and launch torpedoes at you indefinitely. Uh, she does have smoke, and it can be used for a multitude of purposes. However, I have to say that overwhelmingly Storotsovoy's strength with her smoke is going to be using it to cover the advance or of other ships or the retreat of herself after basically YOLOing. That's you only live once, for those who don't know what that acronym means. Uh, YOLOing into enemy positions and torpedoing them all to death, which you're going to see in copious amounts in the battle video. She is fast for a tier 2. She's also extremely maneuverable, but her detection range is like US destroyers in that it's pretty high at the lower tiers. They, they stay pretty high. Unfortunately for the Russians, though, their concealment stays high. In fact, gets into cruiser territory the higher and higher we get in tiers. 
And so the one thing that you won't see a whole lot of anymore with these ships is going to be concealment builds. And that's because they're high speed and relatively good maneuverability makes them extremely hard to hit at longer ranges. And again, these ships are primarily focused on ambush torpedoing. As we get higher and higher in the tiers, they're going to start bringing guns into play, and then the ships are going to start basically being the long-range HE spamming destroyer slash cruiser thing that Habarovsk ends up being. So that's kind of the direction that Russian destroyers are going. Storotsovoy starts us off at the basically 180 degrees from that. But uh, Storotsovoy is a fantastically fun ship. In fact, between Storotsovoy and the Samson on the U.S. destroyer line, I'm really kind of struggling which tier two I actually like the most. Uh, I think Samson overall I'm a little bit more comfortable with, and I, that's just simply because I played it more often. But I plan on keeping Sorotsovoy around for a little bit just to kind of mess around with her, uh, or him, mess around with him a little bit more and, and uh, get more comfortable with the, the lower tier play styles. It's, it's a lot of fun. Let's go over the stats. She has 7,800 hit points, 13 millimeters of armor, which is basically nothing, which is acceptable. Her main battery consists of a 4-inch, 60-caliber model 1911. Not to be confused with capitalist 1911. It's only 45 caliber. It is tiny, half-inch, less than half-inch bullet. Anyway, 9.7-kilometer range, reload speed of 5 seconds, 180-degree tra traverse time of 22.5 seconds, which, for the record, is within, uh, you know, a couple seconds of the Japanese destroyer tur traverse, which is frequently considered to be extremely bad. Torpedo tubes. Three triple launchers. They are 33-second uh, reload, 7.2-second 180-degree time turn time, so your torpedo tubes are going to get there before your guns are, which is one more reason why this ship is quite a potent torpedo boat, although... Short range torpedo boat, 4K range, 0.8 kilometer detection range, and they do a pretty decent amount of damage, 6,100, basically 6,167 damage. That 33 second reload time is really what makes these torpedoes so useful and powerful. In terms of AA defense, no Tier 2s see any carriers, but she does have two 7.62mm Maxim machine guns, as well as one 40mm Vickers AA gun, which is parked right there behind the uh, main front main gun. In terms of maneuverability, she has a top speed of 35 knots, turning circle radius of 490 meters, and a rudder shift time of 2.1 seconds. That is quite maneuverable for a destroyer and at tier two it may not be the best but it is definitely a lot of fun to play this ship oh my concealment 5.6k which again is pretty comparable to the u.s destroyers at this tier it's not great it's not bad it's just kind of well i guess it, it, it it's rivaling for the worst at the tier <laughs> these ships get spotted compared to their torpedo and gun range from space uh, 4K is really short on torpedoes. Detection range by air of only 2.7 kilometers. In terms of upgrades, Main Armaments Mod 1. In fact, this is pretty much going to be the standard for this first slot all the way through until we get... Basically until uh, Grotsovoy on the alternate line... I don't see much in the way of, of reason to take anything else. As we get later on into some of those ships with stronger AA, if you really wanted to run them as AA destroyers, Auxiliary Armaments Mod 1 for the AA gun survivability, but most of those ships are going to have their AA firepower concentrated in their dual-purpose guns. So anyway, Main Armaments Mod 1, that's going to be for the 20% reduction in the chance of your main battery and torpedo tubes getting incapacitated, plus 50% to their hit points, and 20% reduction in the time it takes to repair them. 
A magazine mod one, somebody's going to throw it out there, but it's a 70% reduction in the chance of getting detonated. Well, the chance of getting detonated is already pretty low, and if you're really worried about detonations, throw the detonation flag on there. It's basically going to eliminate it entirely unless you run one of those flags that increases your chance to become detonated. So that's it for this stuff. Let's talk about a battle. Alright, so this battle is obviously going to involve Tier 2 ships, and it's also going to involve Tier 3 ships. And the reason for that is because, well, um, ever since they kind of tweaked the matchmaker to put Tier 1s by themselves entirely, rather than Tier 1s and Tier 2s being together, well, yeah, we get stuck in Tier 3 fights all the time. And just so you know, if you happen to see Privyat Tavarashi Udachi e Veselitsia, that means good luck and have fun. Well, it means hello, comrades, good luck and have fun all, basically, is what that means. So, that's what that means. Uh, that's not me speaking Russian. I don't know Russian outside of little phrases. And uh, I use it mostly to troll the crap out of Moon Puma, who is a member of our clan that is uh, from Russia. So, anyway. Um, Okay, so Strotsovoy, you can see here there's only two destroyers in this match on each team, and that means that we get pretty much free reign, provided their cruisers aren't paying a whole lot of attention. Now, because I spawned up here on the north side of the map, it's going to be C for us, and that's where the fun and the party is going to start. And so this map is actually a lot of fun. I th Haven, I think, is the name of the map. Uh, anyway... The overall goal on this map is you got to have your team push through either A or C while simultaneously pushing through B. And that sounds a lot more complicated than it really is. If you spread out too much, it's very easy to lose these match, uh, these matches on this map. Basically, if you can, you know, if you're pushing to, let's say we pick B, C, the vast majority of your fleet needs to push to B at least until you can figure out where the other team went so that you can kind of figure out whether you need to pivot to the north or pivot to the south. Uh, generally speaking, though, I have found that the vast majority of teams on this match don't end up doing that. There's not enough time to really do that, but uh, yeah. So we've got a smoke cloud coming up here, and I know what's going to happen. Oh, G101, you have been spotted, mostly because he is firing. So I'm going to throw some torpedoes into that smoke, th knowing full well that they probably won't get there. But if this G-101 decides to come back around, he's in for a nasty, nasty surprise. Now I'm going to go sit here and I'm going to... I don't want to beach myself, but I do definitely want to get myself lined up to ambush this G-101. Nobody knows I'm here. I am capping the, the map, which is uh, not unfortunate enough, but uh, uh, we're, we're... Okay, so he's blocking it. Now that the torpedoes are basically going to come up, surprise, Russian ambush destroyer tactics for the win. Launch a set short and then launch another set long and then we're going to engage him with guns to see if we can't do something like that where we take out his engines, which is going to slow him down long enough for, you got it, torpedo attack. All right, so we got two down. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pop our smoke. Look at those torpedoes. We're gonna pop our smoke here. Oh, oh, slow down, <laughs> slow down, guard and protector. So we've managed to slow ourselves down a little bit. Now we've got ourselves a Novik, and he's just in range. Again, remember you've got a lot. You've got three sets of torpedoes here. Definitely a very powerful torpedo armament. Even though you're not doing a you know a whole lot of damage, unfortunately, uh, Mr. Novik has managed to evade our torpedoes. It's that glorious Soviet bias. So we are going to pray, pray, pray that he ends up dying here soon. And down he goes. That leaves ourselves with, uh, well, we've got ourselves a Kawachi. And once again, he's approaching us. Uh, you can launch torpedoes at these ranges, and believe it or not, if they continue to charge towards you, they will actually run into those torpedoes. You don't have to wait until they are exactly 4k away to launch. Just have to make sure that the distance that's covered 
is going to, you know, result in your torpedoes hitting him. We managed to start him on fire here. We're already up to 12,000 damage already. Look at those torpedoes. They're looking glorious. Glorious, glorious, glorious. Oh, they ran out of steam. Literally, actually, ran out of steam. <laughs> torpedoes in this, in this era have relied almost entirely upon steam to power them, which is part of the reason why they had those really really large torpedo contrails. It wasn't until World War II, really, that the electric torpedo took off with any real um, fashion fanfare, I guess, and, and really it was the Germans that quite popularized that. And, okay, so we got more torpedoes that we're launching. Again, we launched two sets at the marker, one set really far short, thinking, well, if he decides to come this way, if he decides to turn, uh, we will be able to hit him with those torpedoes. In the meantime, we're going to continue to shoot at him, though, and use islands for cover. If you're looking for more information on how to use torpedoes, I have a fantastic video on torpedo aiming basics. I highly encourage you to go seek that out on the channel. If I remember to, I'll remember to throw it into the actual description for you guys. So here we are, we're going to go over here, and the reason we're going over here, look at this massive amount of people just sitting here in smoke. Oh, hey, we got ourselves a free kill there. <laughs> Can't complain about that. We do need to pay attention to those torpedoes, make sure that they're not going to be in the way. And, oh, didn't get that kill. Oh, come on, Urien, turn, turn. Yes, he's evaded. Unfortunately, he is in way. <laughs> Comrade, please, get out of way. Now, 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 now. Since he's going ahead, we're, we're going to launch him ahead of him. Ahead of this uh, poor, poor, poor Dresden. He's not going to survive this engagement. Uh, yep, down he goes. And, okay, so we're, we're up to three kills already. We've got ourselves a lot of torpedo hits, and we've still got ourselves a lot of actual hit points. Uh, just now breaking into the yellow. But look, we got Friant, and we've got ourselves a target off there on the right. we got ourselves a Kawachi. Man, we're just in a target-rich environment here. So let's go chase down Mr. Friant. He's behind the island here. We've got our speed boost up for eight more seconds. But we definitely need to uh, get this attack off and plan it just right and launch one ahead. Ooh, launch one ahead just in case. Normally I would. However, this time you can see that I am not. I'm holding off. And knowing that Friant has uh, torpedoes, definitely needed to slow down there to avoid getting hit by those. And down goes yet another ship. We're we are in Kraken territory here. Ooh. <laughs> Think thin. <laughs> oh my. Now would be a perfect time to have smoke up, but unfortunately we do not. <laughs> uh, yep, it's time to run away. <laughs> run away! Run away! Oh my. So we're going to continue to engage as we run away, hoping that we can get this fire out before we get killed. Hopefully, hopefully we can get away before we get killed. Oh my. So this, this uh, Friant is not doing a very good job of paying attention to the destroyer that's in front of him. He is actually focused heavily on the G101 that's over there. Uh, come on, torpedo tubes. Nah, those aren't going to hit. He's going to get away from that. But just in case he decides that he wants to go ahead and uh, turn, we've got torpedoes inbound there for him. Well, maybe. It looks like he's slowed down a little bit. We might actually get something here out of this. Oh. Oh! Hey! There's a Kraken! <laughs> well, we've got a couple of other heavily damaged ships. We're no longer detected, which... Well, see, I would have hit him with those. Would have been very, very close, but uh, I probably would have gotten that kill. So we've got some other ships that need to be taken out here. We've got ourselves a Kraken already. 37,516 damage. You can kind of see how I'm pushing on the map. Uh, it's very difficult to figure out, you know, what ships you can and can't push on. At this tier, what I've found is that the vast majority of players are focusing on the big ships. They're not really focusing on the little ships. And as a result, you can get away with quite a lot in these destroyers when you, you know, YOLO charge at people. And the key is to look at the mini-map and see what kind of ships are in an area near a ship that's supporting it. So, for instance, in this, 
you know, they've got themselves two two battleships, a Nassau and a Kawachi. Uh, this Nassau was at least originally coming north. Well, it looks like he's still coming north. So, if he comes far enough north, I'll be able to torpedo him when he won't be able to really do much about it. And that's actually kind of nice. And we're going to go to B and we're going to try and cap B because we need to cap another point that's going to help us out. It's just going to ensure that we win, plus it's going to give us more experience as a destroyer. Now, we haven't done any uh, defensive smoking of, of our team yet, but uh, we're, as we enter B here, we're definitely going to be popping smoke as we engage. I'm just going to use some of the speed and capabilities of the ship to get just a smidge closer before I actually deploy it, simply because I want to make sure that... Uh, that I can't be seen when I start shooting. Well, I'm going to be shooting and I'm going to be seen. It's not going to really matter, but maybe we can get a sixth kill here. Anyone want to take any bets? Uh, he's got, like, next to no hit points. Come on, Russian bias. What? Oh, he's... Dude, what? <laughs> no. Come on, Russian bias. Yes, we got him. All right. Six kills here. So now it's time to focus down the last ship in this which is this Nassau, and you can imagine how the rest of this went. We managed to get ourselves some defend points here as well. Starting in on fire, so we're getting fire damage. We're up to 40,000 damage, and we're just going to keep adding in more and more and more until we can't engage him any longer, and then we're going to bail out of this and keep going. But I have a feeling this match is going to end faster than many of us want it to. Up to 42,000 damage. Looks like this Freon uh, definitely got some, or was, at least was coming this way to get uh, some smoke cover. But, uh, oh, where did he go? <laughs> he managed to kill our Freon that was uh, going after him here. So that means he's invisible. Now, knowing the direction of travel that he was going, I'm going to go in the opposite direction. Well, the torpedoes killed him. But had that engagement continued, I would have gone in the opposite direction just to keep the island between us. So, 43,253 damage, 2,412 base XP, 6 kills, 8 torpedo hits, 1,531 base XP. Oh my, lots and lots and lots of damage there, mostly from torpedoes and floods and fires. And that's Storozovoy. It's a pretty fun ship, and it's a good introduction to at least the lower tier uh, uh, Russian destroyers. And I hope you guys enjoy playing her. Like, comment, subscribe if you haven't. Thanks for watching.